In the last decade alone, Boston suffered more hot days and nights than any decade in the last 50 years. We know, we feel every summer that our weather patterns are changing and that climate change is here right now. In fact, Suffolk County and the Boston area has experienced some of the greatest temperature increases on average compared to places around the world. And that is a function of our weather, weather systems and the relationship with the temperatures and the oceans. And that means that this cycle will only grow and continue. And we have tremendous urgency to mitigate that. Heat threatens the health and well-being of our residents, of our infrastructure, and our environmental justice communities, like right here in Chinatown, are especially vulnerable. In fact, the most common cause of weather-related fatalities in the country is extreme heat. It's more than tornadoes, hurricanes, flooding, and cold weather combined. Being ready for hotter summers means centering public health and climate justice. And I'm so grateful to our chief, Mariama Whitehammond, her entire team, our partners on the city council and across all of the institutions like the Greenway and so many community groups here in Chinatown for making sure that we could keep our residents at the center of planning for the changes that face us. That's why today we're releasing a new document and roadmap called Heat Resilience Solutions for Boston. This is a plan to prepare Boston for hotter summers and more incidents of intense heat. It prioritizes five environmental justice communities, Chinatown, Dorchester, East Boston, Mattapan, and Roxbury, all of which are hotspots for extreme heat in Boston. We're also launching the Extreme Temperatures Response Task Force to support implementation of this plan and coordinate across departments and levels of government to address chronic high temperatures. Today, we're also taking immediate action to plan even for this upcoming spring and summer season. We'll be distributing 30 pop-up cooling kits with a hose, misters, and tents to community organizations hosting public events throughout the summer. We'll be supporting a cool roof grant program to ensure property owners understand the benefits of cool roofs and to facilitate the installation. And our incredible team will also be hosting a community-wide design challenge for a cool bus stop this fall. The most effective design will inform new bus shelters along the Silver Line 4 and Silver Line 5 routes. Cli cl fighting climate change requires action across all sectors, across all levels of government. Today's plan and this task force are our latest steps forward, but they're certainly not the last as we will continue to do everything possible to empower our communities, to protect our residents, and to continue collaborating towards a citywide Green New Deal and thriving green economy. And myself and the mayor got here early before the speaking program started and we had the opportunity to talk to these young kids here, these students, they're Josiah Quincy students. And they were telling us about um, access to parks and what they want in this park, including swings and, and playgrounds. And I just want to say thank you to Chris Cook and the Greenway team for being a great neighbor to the residents of China of Chinatown in making sure this park will eventually be a beautiful, beautiful park. So I want to say thank you to Chris, but I, 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 I couldn't stop thinking when I saw these, these kids. I, I probably come here five, six days a week and we have the highest asthma rate right here in this neighborhood. And we have very few parks. We have very few green space. We have, we don't have any trees. I have to wear this hat because I try to stay out of the, out of the, out of the sun. But we wanna make sure that these young kids have the same access to open space, to parks, to playgrounds, to athletic programs as any other kid across the city. So I want to say thank you to the mayor's team for investing so much in this community because these kids really deserve it. These families deserve it. Our seniors deserve it. And Boston is a welcoming city. We welcome our immigrant communities. And we're so proud of the Asian community here in Chinatown and the Chinese community for their tremendous sacrifice and service in making Boston a better, a better place. So I'm, I'm honored to be here. I just want to say thank you to the dedicated city employees that are here, 
but especially to say thank you to the residents of Chinatown for working with us, not giving up hope, but working with us so we can improve this neighborhood, make it better for everybody, address quality of life issues. So I'm honored to represent this community. Thank you, everybody. Leaders here, and Chinatown really is a community of people who are focused on making this neighborhood better. Here representing uh, two, two groups actually, is Karen Chen, the Executive Director of the Chinese Progressive Association, but she's also a member of the Community Advisory Board for the city's heat plan. Please give her a warm welcome, thank you. Thank you. So first I want to thank um, the mayor, um, you know, all the city staff, council president Flynn, our city councilor, to be here. Um, you know, within our community, we don't have a lot of opportunity to talk about the environment. So we're really grateful that the city and the city councils brought everyone here in the community together to talk about the environment. We have so many challenges uh, in our community. Oftentimes, the environment actually is put in the back burner. So I'm so glad that we're here today to be celebrating Earth Day together in Boston's Chinatown. Um, 因為今天地球日 心臟健康也是有影響 健康造成有很大的影響 so,我們有這麼多的問題 so, um, we probably actually a lot of people in the community, um, you know, uh, don't really know that the asthma rate in Chinatown is so high. Uh, also probably aren't aware that, you know, the ultra fine particle matters in our air also impacts our cardiovascular health. Um, or that Chinatown is a heat island where harder than mo most other neighborhoods and heat stay longer. And, uh, and also, um, you know, the threat of um, rising sea level. Um, you know, where we stand here, you know, you see Beach Street actually used to be a beach. Uh, that's why it's Beach Street. So a lot of, um, you know, Chinatown is actually landfill, used to be water. And so the, the rising sea level is also a threat. So I'm really, you know, grateful that the city is coming up with a plan that actually includes protecting Chinatown's future, including, you know, the environment, and actually put this more to the forefront so the resident can think about, as we are thinking about stabling Chinatown's housing stock, as we are talking about stabilizing working families, where does you know environment fit into this whole you know big picture, and um, and I know that within the community we're working on a on a microgrid, right, to address you know 
safety issues. And we also, we're going to be, you know, at the State House with Mayor Wu um, to fight for low income fare because it's all part of really, you know, protecting our neighborhoods. So, um, so I'm really grateful that um, we're here. And uh, like the mayor said, we have a plan. Let's get to work. <laughs> Karen, thank you so much for those remarks.